Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. This is the word of God and the word of Jesus to us today. Amen? Let us learn from it. Look again at verses 18 to 19. John's disciples told him about all these things, calling two of them. He sent them to the Lord to ask, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? John the Baptist, while in prison, told his disciples to ask Jesus directly, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect somebody else? Again, John the Baptist whose aunt was Mary, the mother of Jesus, John the Baptist, who God spoke to, John the Baptist, who preached a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins, John the Baptist, who baptized Jesus himself and experienced the Holy Spirit coming down on Jesus, and then he heard God from heaven saying, This is my Son, who I am well pleased. John the Baptist experienced all of these things. And Jesus was his cousin. Why would John the Baptist ask, is Jesus really the Savior, God, Messiah? That's what we see, don't we? He told his disciples, ask Jesus, are you really the Messiah? Before we answer that question, let me ask this question. Did Jesus give a direct answer? Did Jesus give a direct answer, yes or no? We don't see that, do we? We don't read a direct answer from Jesus to John's question. And so, we need to think and somewhat speculate, but of course, we need to hear directly Jesus' words. But we can speculate why John the Baptist ask his disciples to ask Jesus, are you really the Savior? I can think of at least three reasons why John the Baptist would ask that question. Are you really the Messiah, Jesus Christ? So number one, it is possible that John the Baptist had doubts. He was wondering, it's, it's, this is way beyond me. Is Jesus really the Messiah? John the Baptist could have had doubts, and how can we say this, and how can I bring this about, why we, that could be a possibility? You know who John the Baptist is? John the Baptist is a human being, like you and me. John the Baptist is a sinner, like you and me. John the Baptist, like the rest of us, can have doubts even with all the experiences he had. John the Baptist could have doubted because only Jesus Christ walked the earth without sin. John the Baptist sinned as well and needed a savior. And even if John the Baptist had, had, did have those doubts, do you think Jesus would get so upset? Do we see Jesus getting upset about John the Baptist if he did have doubts? What do we read? Jesus loved John. Even in this text, even if John had doubts, we know for sure Jesus said in verse 28, no human being is greater than John the Baptist. Even if John had doubts. And even if John had doubts, Jesus still loved him because why? What else did Jesus do for John? What else did Jesus do for John? Did he get him out of prison? Did he save him from being beheaded? What did Jesus do eventually for John the Baptist? You're looking at it. Never forget that whether it's John the Baptist, whether it's Mary, whether it's the Apostle Paul, whether it's Joseph, Jesus died for each one of them like he died for you and me. 
even if John doubted, Jesus still loved him very much because Jesus died for him specifically. We just read in our uh, Bible study today in Ephesians that God's grace is a portion to each one of us individually. God has given us grace to the measure that we need. And John the Baptist needed the Savior. And so Jesus died for him because Jesus loves him. When you and I doubt God, what do you think Jesus would say to us? Doubts will come. And even when we doubt, Jesus can still tell you, in spite of your doubts, I love you. I died for you. I rose from the dead for you. I'm praying for you right now. And I will come back for you and perfect you to who I intended you to be in spite of your doubts. So, John could have had doubts, but there's an answer. And we'll come back to that in our biblical principles to live by. So, maybe John didn't doubt. Maybe John asked the question, Jesus, are you really the Messiah? Because he was just so tired of the suffering that he was going through. Yes, he had visitors, but he's in prison waiting to be executed. Maybe they were feeding him steak when he really was a vegetarian. <laughs> but what we know was John was in prison and likely heard he was already on schedule to be beheaded. So John knew Jesus was the Messiah, but maybe he was just having such a hard time with the life that God has given to him. He was tired of waiting because of the pains he was going through on earth. Do you see that? And we can say that because we've all been there. Ever feel that way? That life is just so tough. Lord, get me out of here. Are you really my savior? I'm going through so much pain. I'm dealing with some issues. I'm dealing with my family and my relatives. Are you really the one? It's possible that John was asking that question because he was suffering on earth. So what was Jesus' response to a tired and suffering John the Baptist? Let's look at what Jesus said now. Look at verses 21 to 22. After that very, at that very time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, go back to John and report what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Jesus told John to see all the miracles that are going on around him and to the many people who will also be going to heaven because of their belief in Jesus Christ. The gospel is being given and being received. The kingdom is expanding and miracles are happening in spite of your suffering, John. And you are part of that plan. That's Jesus' reply to his sufferings. Jesus told John to see all the miracles happening and the many people who will also be going to heaven like he will be going to heaven as well. Even for believers of Christ today, no matter how godly we may be, because we live in a sinful world, there will be pain and suffering. There will be pain and sufferings. And we could doubt. We could question God because of the stuff that's going on personally in our lives. 
But that was happening to John the Baptist. And Jesus replied to him, John, see the spiritual realm and what's going on. And so how should we deal with our sufferings today, which can lead to our questioning of God? Hear what Jesus said to John the Baptist. See the miracles around you. See the people that are growing in their faith and and being plucked out from the depths of hell and being brought to the light of Christ. It is happening in front of us. Open your spiritual eyes in spite of your pain and suffering. And finally, number three, I think another possible reason why John the Baptist asked his disciples to ask Jesus. You follow that? He asked his disciples to ask Jesus if he really is the Messiah, and I think it is possible that John the Baptist was just being creative and being empowered by God because of what John the Baptist was doing was to simply lead his friends to Christ. Go ask him. Go ask him. Don't come to me. Go to the person that really has the answer. That's what he was doing simply, I believe. John the Baptist sent his disciples to ask Jesus if he's really the Messiah to simply lead John's disciples to Jesus Christ. Don't follow me. Follow the real Messiah. John was personally told and personally experienced Jesus Christ as the Savior Messiah. And again, Jesus praised John the Baptist in verse 28. And so John the Baptist told his disciples to ask Jesus if he really is the Messiah, not for his own benefit, but for the benefit of his friends. Do you follow that? Fantastic truth here because we're also called to lead our friends, not to ourselves, not to the church, but to Jesus Christ, the only Messiah. John the Baptist tried to take the focus on himself. Remember, these disciples, they're disciples of John. They were following John and seeing John. They wanted to copy John. And John says, I ain't it. Go to the man, to the Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't focus on me. Focus on Jesus Christ. How are we leading our friends to Jesus Christ? Yes, invite them to church. Yes, invite them to a Bible study. But really, our focus needs to be leading our friends to the Savior, Messiah, Jesus Christ. So let us note again how Jesus responded to that question, are you the one who was to come or should we expect someone else? Let's look at Jesus' answers. And Jesus basically answered, you may be wondering, John the Baptist may be, the disciples may be, you and I may be wondering. And Jesus answered, You may be wondering, but look at what is going on because of me. Look at what's going on because of me. Verse 22, again, the miracles that are happening, especially the dead raised and the good news preached. And we don't read it here, but John the Baptist and his disciples, do you think they were students of God's words, the Old Testament? And the Old Testament prophesied, predicted that a Savior, Messiah, is going to come. And so Jesus answered, you may be wondering, but I am fulfilling all the prophecies told about the Messiah, the Savior, through the prophets, especially the prophet Isaiah. That's what Jesus was saying. Look at what is going on because of me and I and fulfilling, and for us, Jesus has fulfilled every prophecy from God's word, the Old Testament. And let us not miss, really this is the main point of the 
message, I believe, is verse 23. This is the words of God. This is the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He told John's disciples and told his disciples to tell John the Baptist. And, John, and Jesus, I believe, is telling each one of us today. Jesus said, blessed is the person who does not fall away on account of me. Whether it's hard times or questions, you will be blessed if you remain in me. Do not fall away. Do not fall away. And so in summary, Jesus basically said, do not fall away but remain in me and you will be blessed in spite of your doubts, in spite of problems that may be happening. Remain in me. I am it. Do not fall away. You will be blessed over all the earth and the heavens if you stay in me. Let's wrap it up. How do we apply these things. Number one, when you doubt, know how and remind yourself of how much God really loves you through Christ. Really grasp the love of God through Christ to you personally. Yes, I agree with my mom when she says, I still don't believe you're a minister. Because <laughs> mom saw me as a teenager rebelling. Mom saw my failures. I still don't believe sometimes. But I know God loves me and forgives me in spite of all my faults. And that's why I bring you to think the same. Remind of yourself of how much God loves you through Christ. That's number one. Whenever doubts come to mind. Actually, it's a good practice to remind ourselves every day how much God loves us through Christ. Number two, when you're going through pain and suffering, what we need to do is what Jesus said. Note all the great things God is doing in your midst. You know, there are times when I'm disappointed and I, Lord, are, are, are are we going to continue as a body of Christ? Should I be looking at something else? Then I think of you. Think of Wayne and Lucy. Bless me yesterday as I come in. Everything's clean. The things are being dressed up for celebrating Christmas. I think of Donald who shares uh, his, his, his faithfulness and testifying. I praise God for the people who come to Bible study, for Polo, for asking, how can I live? There is, There are miracles happening all over us. I think of my family. I think of my friends. When you're going through pain and suffering, note all the great things God is doing in your midst, and you will see plenty. Write them down. The miracles of life. Number three, commit and learn how to lead your friends to Jesus Christ. John the Baptist did that. And, and I kind of made a mistake here. Hey, I'm not perfect. <laughs> In the slides, that, that first slide, we should constantly think and pray about this. It's about leading our friends to Jesus Christ. We should constantly think and pray about leading our friends to Jesus Christ. That's what John the Baptist did with his disciples. And then lastly, number four. No matter, no matter what's going on, especially during hard times, remain in Christ. He is it. Memorize John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the life. I am the truth. No one comes to God the Father. No one comes to heaven. No one gets the blessings unless they go through me. Jesus is it. No matter what's going on in your life, and it can be messy, 
remain in Christ, he will bless you. Would you think about that for a moment as we prepare our hearts for worshiping with our offerings? Take a moment to pray right where you are.